XXX. Hello there, this is Shell, and welcome to the 11th episode of my 17 part series on getting a great vocal sound. This series is a crash course on best practices you need to know to get good results in a home recording environment from performance to recording to mixing. Last time, I discussed some critical audio concepts, introduced the mixing process, and shared the number one rule of vocal mixing. If you haven't already seen this video, go check it out. In today's tutorial, I'll be going over all the equipment you need to mix your vocals. So let's get started. Dog. The main piece of equipment you need is a digital audio workstation, also known as a DAW or DAW for short. A DAW is a special kind of software that has all the tools you need to turn a collection of audio clips into a complete song. You can use it to record instruments, edit and arrange audio clips, control volume levels and pan positions, create whole new sounds, and much more. All DAWs also come with a large collection of plugins, which are effects modules that you can place on your audio tracks. There are many DAWs to choose from. Some common examples include Pro Tools, Logic Pro, Cubase, Studio One, Reason, FL Studio, Reaper, Ableton Live, GarageBand, Bitwig Studio, Audition, and Acid Pro. Breathe. But with so many options, how do you choose one? There are several things to consider when evaluating a potential DAW. First, system requirements. Make sure it can run on your computer. Many DAWs work on any operating system, but some are Mac only or Windows only. Plus, some DAWs require a faster or more powerful computer to run properly. Next, copyright protection. Some DAWs require you to install a registry file on your computer. Others require the purchase of a special USB stick to store your licenses. This isn't a huge deal, but it's something to keep in mind. Next, features and plugins. All DAWs come with standard tools like compressors, EQs, reverbs, and stuff like that. However, some DAWs have extra features that others don't. Make sure the DAW you choose has the features to meet your needs. For example, if you plan on making electronic music, make sure the DAW has synthesizers, virtual instruments, a good sample library, and MIDI support. If the DAW you choose doesn't have the features you need, you might be able to find third-party plugins or software to compensate, but it'll make your job much easier if your DAW already has the things you need. If you have any questions about what features are needed to meet specific ends, feel free to ask. Next, and most important, workflow. Every DAW can do pretty much the same stuff, but the way they achieve those ends can be very different. For example, Reason has a vastly different way of managing plugins and audio compared to, say, Studio One, which is in turn vastly different from FL Studio. Further, you may find one DAW easier to work with than another. So how do you know which workflow works for you? Simple. Test drive. Almost every DAW has a demo version. So find a DAW that interests you, download the demo, and play around with it for a few hours. Find out how you do things like record and arrange audio, program MIDI data, mix the audio tracks, and add plugins. However, a word of caution. Judge a DAW based on how easy it is to do things, not based on whether it can do them. Just because you can't figure out how to do something doesn't mean the DAW can't do it. If you're having trouble figuring out how to, say, import an audio file, look it up online. Do your research and see if the DAW is a good fit for how you like to work. Last and least important, price. DAWs run the gamut when it comes to pricing, ranging from the low price like the $60 Reaper or the $0 GarageBand to the mid price like the $300 Cubase or the $400 Reason to the expensive like the $900 Pro Tools. However, price isn't everything. If you've done your research and you find out that a more expensive DAW is the right one for your needs, I strongly encourage you to save up your money and buy it, rather than settling for a cheaper DAW that you're not happy with. You're going to be working with your DAW for a long time. Don't settle for a bad fit. On the other hand, the price of a DAW is not an indicator of quality. Just because one DAW costs more than the other doesn't mean it's better. So with all that in mind, you have some options. Most DAWs come with multiple versions at different prices. For example, FL Studio has a $100, a $200, a $300, and a $900 version. Likewise, Pro Tools has a $900 and a $10,000 version, but it also has a free version. Not all versions have the same features, so be sure to check that before you buy anything. Notice how I never said anything about audio quality. That's because all DAWs have the same effect on audio quality. None. In terms of how audio is sampled, played back, and rendered, all DAWs are created equal. I've put a link in the description to an in-depth explanation from the folks at ImageLine if you'd like to know more. For everyone else, rest assured that your audio quality will not suffer because of the DAW you choose. So I've mentioned a lot of different DAWs, but what about Audacity? Well, I did recommend it in my basic vocal recording and mixing series, but that was just to get you started. If your goal is getting a great vocal sound, 
I don't recommend Audacity for one reason. It isn't a DAW. Audacity is an audio editor. But what's the difference? Audio editors like Audacity lack many of the important features present in all DAWs. I won't bore you with all the differences, so I'll just point out the most important one. A DAW applies its effects non-destructively, which means you can add, remove, alter, and reorder your effects plugins in real time without permanently changing the audio file. Audacity does not do this. Indeed, many of the mixing techniques, vocal effects, and voice like sounds in my videos are difficult or impossible to achieve in an audio editor because of this. So get a DAW, you'll be better off for it. Okay, enough DAW talk for now. Let's move on to the other equipment. Mixing accessories. There are tons of different things you can purchase to spruce up your home studio. I've already covered many of them in the video on recording equipment, but there are three more that are worth talking about. First, studio monitors. These are speakers that are specially designed for mixing audio. Most traditional computer or hi-fi speakers are designed to color the audio, acoustically shaping it to make it sound good. Studio monitors, on the other hand, are designed to have a flat frequency response, meaning that they impart as little sonic coloration as possible. Price-wise, look for monitors that cost between $300 and $1,000 for a pair. And yes, you have to buy two of them. If you want more tips on buying monitors, check out the description for a link to Sweetwater.com's Studio Monitor Buying Guide. Next, mixing headphones. A good set of headphones will allow you to hear things that you otherwise could not hear on speakers, so they're definitely worth having. And if you've followed my equipment guide in the recording section, you should already have a good set of headphones. But if you have some extra cash to burn and don't have any other important equipment to buy, consider getting a set of high-end open-backed headphones. While they don't trap the sound inside them like closed-back ones do, they have a more realistic stereo image and allow you to mix without blocking out the world around you. If you're stuck choosing between several pairs of open-back headphones, pick the ones that are the most comfortable to wear, as you'll probably be using them for many hours on end. Mixing headphones generally go for between $70 and $300. You probably don't need to spend more than that. Last, acoustic treatment. These are foam or plastic panels that you put up on the walls and corners of your room to help deal with any acoustic problems, like bass buildup, weird echoes, or dead spots. Acoustic treatment can cost several hundred dollars to do your whole room, but if you're the DIY type, you can actually build your own acoustic panels for pretty cheap. Link in the description for those who are interested. Now I will say this, all of the accessories I just listed are optional, though strongly recommended. Mixing headphones, studio monitors, and acoustic treatments are not necessary to get a great vocal sound, but they will make it easier. Why? Because they help give you an accurate representation of your mix. It is much easier to make the appropriate mix moves for your project if you know what your mix actually sounds like. Imagine painting a picture in a poorly lit room. You make it look as good as you can based on what you see, but when you take it out into the world, it looks really different from what you envisioned. You'll have the same problems when mixing on standard computer speakers or headphones in an acoustically untreated space. The mix will sound great in your room on your speakers, but when you play it back in your car or at your friend's house, it may sound wildly different. Now, you can still make good quality mixes in a bad room on bad speakers, but it'll be harder and it will require more skill and practice. I'll show you a few techniques in later videos that'll make this job easier, but monitors and acoustic treatments are definitely worth the money. One quick note, you have to be careful how you place your monitors and acoustic panels in your room to maximize their effectiveness. I put a link below to a form for a free personalized room analysis from Auralex so that you can know exactly how to set up your gear. Money. If you've been following this series, you've likely heard the numerous dollar figures I've been quoting, and you're probably starting to notice the total amount adding up. $40 for a mic stand and pop filter, $100 for a microphone, $150 for an audio interface, $300 for a DAW, $300 for a pair of monitors, as much as $1,000 for acoustic treatments. This is getting expensive. But consider this, if you're really passionate about this stuff, then why would you let money get in your way? This is your audio production career we're talking about. Don't don't let a couple hundred or even a few thousand dollars get in the way of pursuing your passions. Plus, I'm pushing for quality. You'll definitely be getting your money's worth if you shell out for the high-end equipment. That being said, I know there are many of you who literally cannot afford to pay this much money, so I'll let you in on a little secret. All you need to have a complete, fully functional home studio is $300. Remember in my recording equipment video where I mentioned the Focusrite Scarlett Solo Studio Pack and how it comes with a mic, a mic cable, a set of headphones, 
headphones, a DAW, and an audio interface for only $200? Well, if you get that, all you need is a pop filter and a mic stand, which you can get for $100 or less. And then you'll have everything you need to start recording and mixing vocals. Check the description for more information about the $300 home studio. And if all you need is a DAW, then you're even better off. Many audio interfaces and even some microphones come bundled with a free DAW. Or if you're on a Mac, you can use GarageBand. If not, then you can use the free Pro Tools First, link below, or any of the demo versions of popular DAWs, some of which have unlimited usage. Why am I telling you all this? Well, in the end, the most important thing for you to do is get some gear, even cheap stuff, and start making recordings. It's better than sitting around and waiting until you have enough money. This is because the most powerful and valuable piece of gear in your arsenal is your skill as an engineer. Skill trumps gear every single time. And don't let anyone tell you otherwise. It doesn't matter how good your gear is. If you at least have the gear and know how to use it properly, then you'll be capable of getting a great vocal sound. However, you can't get these skills if you don't practice. The way to get good at something is to start learning now, even if it means working with budget gear. So what are you waiting for? Get your gear and get to it. We've got great vocal sounds to make. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say here. If you found this helpful, please like, share, and subscribe. If you want more information or have any questions about mixing equipment, comment below. I'm always open for questions. And if you'd like to request a VoxFX tutorial, please send me a message. Remember, if it's talky, I can talk about it. In the next tutorial, I'll be jumping into FL Studio to show you how to prep your audio for mixing. Until then, have fun and keep making sound, because it's the only way you'll get good. VoxFX. Yeah. <laughs>